Okay, guys, we're back again. This is the OMNNB podcast we've been on for a while, but, you know, we're just watching the drama unfold as the NBA free agency is still happening. There's a lot of moves being made. But today, I'm here with my man, Jamie, as always, all the way in New York City, like I can say. Bro, how are you doing? Good, 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 brother. How's it going? I'm amazing. I'm blessed. But today, you know, Summer League is going on. There's been a ton of games. I mean, we're watching the draft class. Ball out. Chet, Paolo, as always, they're doing anything. But we will not talk about that right now because we're just making sure that, you know, they progress and can't give them enough, you know, talk until the season starts. But the Warriors and the Celtics, both finalists last year and the champions, of course, as Warriors, have added new, you know, players to their roster. They've lost a couple of players, but they've added. Let's start with Celtics. Malcolm Brodkin is back in your team. What does he bring to the Celtics and why was he the best acquisition for you guys? Well, I think he, he's been a good player since uh, he came in the league, starting off um, in Milwaukee. Um, he's just a little injury prone, but I hope that picks up. Um, picks up. He hasn't played so much, especially since he got to Indiana. But in, in games where he's, he's played or whenever he's, he's been healthy, he's been a very good player um, all around, you know, being a defensive player and then an offense as well. So bring him off, off the bench. I think he's accepted that he's going to be uh, coming off the bench. I listened to him on, on Woj's podcast yesterday. Um, he's going to come off the bench. So having him as a sixth man off the bench to run that offense well, with a second unit and sometimes um, down the stretch would be a, a great, a great thing for the team. Especially looking at how they needed playmaking sometimes uh, during the finals. Okay. Now he is uh, is a two way player, points and shooting. Which position do you think you see him more playing off a point or a shooting guard? Um, point, point, and, and it's the reason why um, he's going to come off the bench because Smart is going to um, start at a point there, Jalen Brown at the two. So definitely he's going to come off the bench um, with um, Eric White um, as, as the guards, but he's going to be handling the ball most of the time because that's a great job. Um, making plays for other people and scoring the ball himself. Okay, so now, is this the winning piece, the missing piece for Boston Celtics? Because there's been conversation about the team not having a true point guard player. The offseason is here, and I wouldn't say Malcolm Brogdon is a true point guard player, but do you still believe going for a Marcus Smart isn't a true point guard player, and then you guys need that to limit turnovers for the team? Well, I wouldn't say he's necessarily the missing piece, but he's just an extra uh, um, um, extra tool in the toolbox. He's just one um, extra thing that we needed. Bench scoring. We realized um, down down the stretch you now in the finals, the bench couldn't produce much. So having a player who averaged 19 points per game last season coming off the bench, that's a huge uh, boost. And then um, the talks about playmaking. Um, like I keep saying, we don't have a lot of point guards in the, in the league right now. You know, just a few. But you know, if you have a few people who can you know make plays for other people here and there, and also score the ball. I mean, you, you can you can do something with that. Okay. Now he's not played more than sixty games in a season since twenty eighteen. That a concern, or you just still you just think it's just in the past? You can move forward. So yeah, that's what I what I mentioned uh, um, at the beginning of the show that he hasn't played so much. He he's been injury prone for um, the past few years, and I'm, I'm expecting him to. Uh, I just hope he's healthy enough to contribute because uh, uh, we need him more in the postseason. So I hope he stays healthy and helps the team like they bring him. They bring him to the. Okay. Well, enough about Celtics. Let's look at the Warriors. Dante DiVincenzo, Di sorry. A former champion moving into a championship winning team. What, what, what are your takes on it? Well, he's also another scorer, another guard uh, joining the team. And I think I'm happy for him. Um, he's going to provide some bench scoring us. So he's a, he's a decent and shooter. He, he, plays, he plays well. And I'm expecting him to um, how the play, to celebrate uh, all the departures the team has had in this offseason. Okay. The Warriors has lost a lot of their bench team. Less the start of Gary Payton's move to the Portland Trailblazers. Um, Juan Toscano, who's who's going all the way in LA. Otto Porter, who's moving to Toronto with the Raptors. How big of an impact will it have on their bench team? Because now they have to depend on guys like J. 
Jonathan Kuminga, Moses Moody, and James Wiseman, who literally just came back and just started playing in the summer league. Do you think the Warriors subtraction and addition with this young core is going to be great and help them back into the finals? Not, 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 not that. I wouldn't say it's going to take a huge toll on the team because these these players are like high draft picks who who have um, been in development for a, a year or two now. I mean, Wiseman two years, Kuminga for a year now, and then Moody and all these guys. They are going to have a lot of time to develop this year. They are going to sell up playing time, and I think that's the direction the Warriors decided to go in uh, on this going into next year. So I think it's going to be something that um, would help the team more. They might start off a little slowly because they are young and they are still learning, but uh, eventually they're going to um, kick things off and then pick up the pace. I'm, I'm just excited for what's going to happen. Okay. James Wiseman is back, uh, not plagued, you know, he's just now playing in the summer league, hoping to get, you know, excited or, you know, fully fit for the new season. Do you see him playing much of an impact as a big on the Warriors team, or you still think the Warriors need to go small in most of their games? Well, it depends on the matchup, <clears throat> but ultimately, it depends on um, how, how, how well, you know, he shows up. Um, he's he's looked good since he's been in, he's been he's been in the um, in, in the summer league, and so it's just his first game back, and I'm expecting him to you know develop more and then um, just pick up the pace and then get get into his rhythm. Well, let's move to from one big to another big. Uh, Rudy Gobert is with the Timberwolves now. The Timberwolves is looking like a pretty big team because they have Rudy, they have Katz, they have Edwards, and they have D'Angelo Russell. Do you think it's a scary lineup or it's just a team that can make the playoffs and not much of an impact? Well, you could look at it from um, different perspectives, right? Because you can look at um, how Rudy, Rudy Gobert has played in the playoffs so far in his career. He, he's, he's a very good player in the regular season. You know, defensive stopper, he's a multiple time uh, defensive player of the year. So yeah, you can't just discount what he brings, but what we've realized over the past few years is that in the playoffs, it becomes very difficult for him to you know, play. And so that's probably one loophole that teams have been to exploit, that you know, probably deciding to go small against them, then it becomes very difficult for them to guard the smaller guys of social perimeter. But then um, looking at their size, they're going to be a, a good regular season team. But that I, I can tell because you know regular season you don't have so many adjustments to make. You just play one game and then you move on. But in the seven games series in the playoffs where teams keep making adjustments, <clears throat> it becomes um very easy for teams to, you know, you know, um, scout get scouting reports and then run plays that's going to go against you. But I'm just, I'm just, you know, on paper they look like, you know, a, a, a monster team that's going to um, um, come in and make some noise. But I want to see how that that pans out. Everything is good on paper, yeah, mostly good on paper. But we need to see how that, you know, materializes. I mean, of course, on paper it looks good. Now we saw Cats play more of a big man because the team they didn't really have, you know, in terms of size and big, a big man like him. And now they've added Gobert to fill in that gap. So we're going to see. Cats move from the big man position more into a scoring position like a power forward or a shooting forward. Is that, a, is that going to impact the team's offensive, you know, scoring or is it still going to be, you know, they need more from the offense because the team depending more on him to do much on offensive side and, you know, on the defensive side. So now they have Gobert doing the defensive work. Is Cats going to average more than like 30 points per game now? How do you say more than 30 points, but so one thing I think Minnesota did was just take off um, some most of the pressure off of Cat so he can focus more on the offense. So because we realized in the playoffs they didn't have much uh, real protection. Yeah, and they have to prepare to do that for them. So then definitely um Kat is going to work more on the offense. And mind you, he's a very good scorer, he's a very good three point shooter. In fact, the all-star game last year, he was um the three point um, champion. So he's a very good floor spacer. So it's, it's not going to be like um, a clock pace for Minnesota. He's going to probably be in the corner. He's going to be at the top of the key. So 
they are going to run a lot of maybe pick and pass to him um, at the top of the key because he can shoot. So it's going to work well for them. But as to how that works in the playoffs, that's what I'm yeah, excited to see. Was it a wrong, in your opinion, was that a wrong move? Was it an improvement or, you know, a decrease in, you know, the Rudy Gobert status? Because he's moved from Utah Jazz, who's consistently been in the playoffs and, you know, moved past the first and second round compared to the Wolves, who's had a very terrible record when it comes to playoffs. So as a Rudy Gobert caliber type of player, is it an improvement or is it a decrease in, you know, his status as a player? Well, I mean, it's too early to call, right? You, you have to see them play and you can make your, your, your own assessments. But I feel like it's what Minnesota thought they needed and then they went to get it. They needed some rim protection. And then um, Utah was trying to move on from um, Gobert, so they gave him away. And they, so that essentially today their future way to go get it. So let's see how that works. About the Utah Jazz as well now, Gobert is gone. The team is literally now in the hands of, you know, Donovan Mitchell. It has been actually, because there's been conversation about him being the lead player or Gobert being the team star player. Now, they don't have Gobert. What do you see the team moving on doing right now? Because the only big man I can count on that team right now is Hassan Whiteside. So, what do you see? That, what's the future for Utah Jazz? Well, I, I, I don't exactly know what they're doing, but um, with just Mitchell and then some guys around him, Patrick Beverly, all these guys they got from Minnesota. Um, I, I don't know where the team is headed, especially going into next season, because at least I would have expected them to, you know, add a few uh, pieces here and there. Because mind you, um, uh, um, Ingles is gone now. They need to add a few more pieces here and there to, to make the rest of the trade. They're very favorite to Brooklyn too as well. No, where exactly? Sorry, not that Royce O'Neal. Um, to um, Brooklyn. I don't exactly know where the team is headed right now, but uh, I, I want to see how things work out for them. Probably this might be a down year for them, and they will look in the offseason to maybe make another trade or add a few more pieces or see how things work with um, Denver Mitchell, if he's going to ask out. I don't know. Probably the team is you know, just gearing themselves um, up to hear something about it. But the rumors, the rumors were that they are trying to. Um, got around him, so probably they'll flip most of those um, assets you got from him. Okay, let's talk about contract extensions so now. For other, other players to go. Okay, all right, now let's talk about contract extensions. Now, these are the players so far with you know huge extensions so far. Ja Moran for you know the Memphis Business, Darius Garland, Bradley Beal, Zach Levine, Zion Williamson, Jokic, the MVP, Booker, and Kat. Now, let's start with. Bradley Beal, because there was rumors people were thinking he was going to move away from Washington Wizards. Is this a great move? Because, I mean, the Wizards still are struggling. You know, Beal needs a second man. Kuzma provided a lot of great scoring. Contavious got a poke, but I think he's gone now. So, what is the future for Washington Wizards since they're giving him a very huge contract? Yeah, he's going to be over there. I don't know what else they'll be doing. They're just going to go back to being, you know, a terrible team. I don't know exactly what the team direction is because it, they are essentially not trying to build around uh, Bradley View, but then they gave him the contract to check it. He's content with being over there. He has a no trade clause in his contract, meaning he doesn't want to move, he wants to be over there. And so I don't know what exactly I'm going to do to build around him, but let's let's see. Okay, Zach Levine, Chicago Bulls. Comments? So he he wants to be in Chicago. He wants to be in Chicago. It, it, initially, there were reports of him being not happy because yeah. he doesn't have become you know, the star. But I think it'll be good with him, uh, with Zach, with um, with Demar, with um, Lonzo. They they, they, should, they should be a good team. And then Vucevic, I mean, they, they should be fine. Okay. They're not championship level, but they can they can make a run. Okay. Booker for the Phoenix Suns. So yeah, Aiden is gone, so the team belongs to him and Chris Paul now. Well, we'll have to see what they do. Yeah, I mean, we've heard about them being in the sweet sticks for Kevin Durant, but let's see how that goes. But yeah, he, he, he's, 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 he's grounded. He wants to be Phoenix, and that's good for them. Will the Suns still be a first-seeded team next season? Well, yeah, if they're bringing the band back, why not? They're still a, they're still a very good team. We'll see how Chris Paul comes back. 
uh, next season, given the fact that he ran out of gas in the playoffs. But we'll, we'll see how they start off next year. But uh, I mean, if everything goes well, they, they should they should still remain a good team. But as to how they perform in the playoffs, we can't tell right there. Okay. Speaking of Aiton, um, after the Malcolm Brogdon deal from you know Indiana Pacers to the Boston Celtics, now the Indiana Pacers has salary cap space to actually sign him on a huge contract. If you were the GM of Indiana, is this a great move you want to make? Well, they're trying to rebuild. And then they already have um, Tyrese Halliburton and then they have Buddy Hill. And now they have some draft assets here and there. I think, so Indiana has been trying to move on from um, Miles Turner for many years now. For some reason, it, it, it never happens. Mm-hmm. And so they'll probably have a signing trade with um, um, Phoenix and then send off Miles Turner and then um, bring um, um, Aiton into the team so that they, they could have like a potential big three in um, um, Buddy Hill if they don't trade him. And then Tyrese Halliburton out of as, as a point guard and then um, the other Aiton. So let's see how that also goes. All these are hypothetical, so we oh, actually see them play out. Yeah. All right, so Dane is not running away from the grind. Dane is staying with a, you know, fallen officer. Actually, they lost CJ McCollum, which to me was a bigger blow because I felt they could have built around Dame, Afreni, and, um, and, and you know, CJ McCollum, but they lost him. But now all they have is Nurkic, uh, Dame, and then Afreni Simmons. Is this a great team to bring them back to the playoffs? Not necessarily. Dame is going to be great. If he's healthy, he was injured, you know, for the most part last year. But Afreni Simmons also on the rise. Nurkic, yeah, he's there. But that's not a team that we want to go into the playoffs with. You know, at, at best, at best, maybe the plane or the first round exit. I don't think they can make it that far in the playoffs. Okay. Another player, Darius Garland, the future of you know the Cleveland Cavaliers. He's still signing a new contract. I feel one of the surprises we're going to have in the season has to be the Cleveland Cavaliers because they showed us what they have as a team in potential. You know what I'm saying? And now Kevin Love is still there as the vet to guide the team. What is the future for, uh, you know, Cleveland Cavaliers in the Eastern, you know, the Eastern Conference, which is now one of the toughest competitions, uh, conferences in the league right now. So where do you see Cleveland going forward? Are they also coming into maybe the second round at best? Well, they, they, are, they already surprised us. Mind you, last year, if Jared Allen and all these guys didn't get injured, there would have been a problem for Brooklyn and playing. They were doing very good until they got injured. So, I expect them to you know, come in and play well. Okay. It was announced that the play is kind of actually going to be a tournament where teams fight for the seventh and eighth spot in the league moving forward. Was this something you expected to stay or it was something you just thought because of, you know, what happened in the bubble and then they brought in these things to actually just get the league to be more exciting? What are your thoughts on it? You know, it's, it's a it's, it's a business move. The the playing the playing generated a lot of um, eyeballs, and so um, the views were good. Because mind you, before teams that knew they weren't going to make the eight seed <clears throat> would give up a few games to to, to to go in the season, but now all the way down to the ten seed, everyone would they still have a chance to make the playoffs. But they still keep playing hard, so it's just a good business move for the league. It brings in more money for them. Zion, I didn't talk about Zion. Zion Williamson with the Pelicans. Now the Pelicans have a great team because they have Zion, they have um, Ingram, they have CJ McCollum. Another another surprise for you in the West. I, well, I mean, if Zion is on your team and he's healthy, he's playing, you should expect something great. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it because there's been so much talk about Zion. I just want him to be healthy and then play because once once he plays, he's, he's, he's great. So I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Another player I also want to talk about is, um, what's his name again? Harry, not forgetting him and Kevin Durant. We can't, you know, do a podcast about basketball and not talk about these two because they're still on show work. Now, the concern is most teams are not willing to give up most of their star players or are, you know, are unable to match what the Nets are asking for. What do you think is, is going to happen with this? Because no team is willing to give up their all-star for Kevin Durant, who's actually a great player as well. But if you were the GM of a team and you have this rumor going on, that you can have 
a great player such as Kevin Durant in addition to your team, and you have future star players. Are you going to give up the star players with Durant and win the championship now, or are you going to build a core team in hopes that they can actually win you something? You know, getting Durant is not a guarantee that you're going to win. A lot of things have to be because once you get you are, you are giving up most of you know your team's assets, you're giving up your own players, you're giving up future draft assets, and nobody wants to take that risk, especially given how things played out in Brooklyn, where you know they missed it, they failed, they didn't do well, they, they got swept, and all of a sudden everybody wants out. Nobody is trying to take that risk, and I can understand it. But um, at this point, I, I don't really know where this is going. Especially, you look at how people would have thought, you know, teams were going to swarm um, the whole um, market to, to try to get drawn up. I would say that everything has gone cool. Everybody just, you know, laid back and just weighing their options and then just calculating their risk because, you know, it could go south for you real quick. It could go south for you real quick. I mean, of course, you're still not seeing the Brooklyn Nets live up to their potential and hype. Because after James Harden left, now James Harden actually is willing to take a pay cut to still stay with the Sixers. Surprised? He wants to win. I mean, he said so much talk about it, and then he said the passion, and then he re- he realized, yo, I've made all this money already. I need to win something, and that's just uh, better on himself. He's, he's been working this offseason a lot on his body, and then restructuring his contract to make sure the team. Is able to resign PJ Taka, the guy to Danua House. So it's like more like a Houston re, you know, that are trying to um, bring that. Uh, I hope it helps him, but he, he needs to work hard to win something for himself. Okay. With the Sixers as well, since he's staying, he's going to be playing with MB. There's Tyrus Maxi. Where do you see the Sixers moving on to next season? Because mind you, with Dark Rivers, there's always concern about not him. Being able to make the finals is actually one coach you actually like to talk about a lot saying he's been able to hold his cv of 2008 championship for a long time in the league uh is this season going to be because we've seen some castle and uh, there was a there was a you know a viral video of Cassell and james harden working hard in the off season uh is this going to be a breakout season for the team as well well I, well i hope they make some noise especially if it comes back if the entire comes back healthy in shape and then his, 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 his hamstring is healed, I should expect them to, you know, play some good basketball. Okay, well, it's a lot to unfold. The drama is unfolding online and, you know, there's still some moves to be made. A little bit about the Summer League. Uh, Banquero and I mean, Chet, you know, are playing now. Banquero has been rest. You know, the, the, the Orlando Magic are saying he's yeah. had enough of him in the in the Summer League. Sure. You know, convinced that, you know, he's even making in the league. Where do you see the Orlando he's Magic? That guy. <laughs> Orlando Magic, for me, has been in rebuild mode for a long time, ever since they lost the likes of Orlando. Very long. Yeah. Still in rebuild mode, but, you know, they have a couple of guys that you can say could be a little bit of a problem. Can they make their playing at best? This season, I can't tell. Um, because they used to start, you know, because even in the bottom, we're talking about the really, um, you're talking about Charlotte, you're talking about, I don't know the situation in Charlotte right now. Um, I don't know who's coming back in terms of Miles Ridges or um, um, uh, this um, Montrez Harold. Um, d- different issues in Charlotte, but yeah, that's just by the way. Um, you know, there's Charlotte, there's Cleveland, there's all these uh, teams. Um, so I don't know where Orlando will be, but they are, they are building and I expect them to grow and then make some more noise in a few coming years. They re signed Mobamba. Very uh um, sorry, Bobo. Yeah, they have Bobo. I don't know if they I don't know what contract is on, but yeah, they have Bobo. Yeah, they have Bobo. So they have Bobo uh, on resign. And they look to be one of the you know very tall teams in the league. Is this still you're still not convinced in our league at least playing our best? Well being being tall alone is not enough. You, you have to be <laughs> you, you, you have to be good enough to play. I mean, if being tall was it, Tak would have been the best player. But um, I just expect the team to grow. They are very young, so we don't expect so much of them um, in the early stages, especially when they are a young team throughout. If it was just a young player thrown into a group of adults and veterans, I thought that would have been a different situation. But they, they are just a, a young team you know, mostly throughout. I think they are, their oldest players would be maybe Terrence Ross and then um, Gary Harris with a resign. But then most of them are just you know, young players, Jerry Sags, 
uh, Will Anthony and then you know, Bob and Kelo, I mean Paolo and Kelo. Yeah, yeah. So let's see how how it goes. The OKC um, has Shai Gilgis Alexander, who's a certified ball, like he can he can score. They added Chet. They have yeah. George Kitty, also playing our best for you. So they are going to be somewhere around, just you know, sniffing the edges, but they are not going to get there this year. Not this year, but they'll be there soon. They don't have Chris Paul on the team. The year they had Chris Paul on the team, the team wasn't a very good team, but then Chris Paul took them to the playoffs. They didn't have Chris Paul this year. So they, they're still going to learn. I'm not going to you know, give them any. If they make it, wow, that's an overall achievement. But I'm not expecting them necessarily to make that huge this year. Okay. All right. Well, it's been the OMN NBA podcast with myself and my man Jamie all the way in New York City. We just, you know, looked at all the moves being made in the summer and off season is here hopefully the season starts very soon because we miss basketball summer league is still ongoing and there's games every day for you to catch more than five six seven games and oh yeah actually talking about summer league uh what are your thoughts on scotty pippen's son and shaquille o'neal's son you watched a little bit of highlights of the games uh, what do you think of them well scotty i like scotty but we have to see more from our, 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 our O'Neal. Okay. I don't know. This is summer league. Let's let's see how. Uh, well, let's hope they actually get signed by the teams. But yeah. they, they should be good in the future. They still get a few more things to you know, um, 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 tighten up here and there. But I, I like I like start I like playmaking people. So yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it's been an OMN NBA podcast with myself, Jamie, all the way in here. Thank you so much. And do not forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel to all your people. You can actually carry it on Spotify as well and then listen to the podcast as always. So we'll be back with more great content. Like I said, all my name before. My name is Derek and I did with Jamie all the way in New York. Thank you so much. Hope you guys enjoy more content on the channel.